Well, hey, friend, welcome back to the podcast. This is podcast episode number 202. I'm going to talk to you today about five things every good business is going to have on their website. Um, I am knee deep in websites right now. So back in December, Team Allwood was launching a new um a new, if you're watching on YouTube right now, yes, this is a blanket on my lap because it's cold. It's in Kansas City and it's cold in January. But back in December, we were launching a new program called The Next Level. And so this is a program designed to take entrepreneurs um, to the six figures a year to the $100,000 a year revenue mark. And um, one of the things that most people are going to need to have in order to take their business to the next level, whether it's, you know, to go from $0 to, you know, a thousand a month, 10,000 a month, a hundred thousand a month, you're going to need a decent website. And we're, uh, we're doing um, like website reviews and critiques and that sort of thing. So we're knee deep in websites right now. And there are some patterns that we've begun to really see. Did I just say begum? That's begun. <laughs> There's some patterns that I've began is actually the right way to say that, that I have began to see um, when looking at, you know, uh, 20 to 30 websites a day, it's interesting. You can start to see like, okay, all these people need to be doing this. All these people need to be doing that. And so I want to talk to you guys today, just to give those of you who you're in business and you have a website and you haven't touched it in a minute, or you are just starting a business and you're like, where do I even begin with websites? Um, or maybe you've been around for a little bit, but you haven't updated your website. You know, what they say in the industry is that if you haven't updated your website in two years, you are already past due for a new website, for a new upgrade, for a new look. Um, and that's unfortunate, but the good news is, is that website updates no longer cost what they used to. I can remember back in the day, Back in the day, I can remember websites, you know, running five to $10,000. I can remember painting kitchen cabinets for a client in exchange for a brand new website, um, bartering a website because we didn't have the money for a brand new one. So the good news is, is that now there are places that will help you with a website for under $1,000. So there's that. Um, if you're one of my clients in Next Lover Inner Circle, you know, there are certain people that we um, recommend for that and we can help you with that. If you're not one of my clients, you should be. Okay. So moving right along. Five things every successful business has got on their website. Okay. So listen, let me say one more thing about the website. Your website is your social proof. And I know it may be more fun to be playing on Instagram stories, but the truth is that when people hear of your business, they are going to go to social media and look you up and they are going to go to the world wide web and look you up. They just are, they're going to want to see, am I dealing with a mom and pop shop or is this a legit business? Am I dealing with something that looks a little sketch or is this something that I actually want to give my money to? There is a psychological thing that happens when people look at a website and when they see one that's not updated at all with buttons that are broken with horrible branding, without a logo. It looks like a 14 year old made it, nothing against 14 year olds. Psychologically, what happens is a potential client will start convincing themselves actually not to do business with you. So you may have the cutest boutique in the world, online boutique, you sell women's clothes, but if they get to your website and it looks like it hasn't been updated in five years and some of the things don't work, and the pictures aren't very big, and it just doesn't look up to date, and they don't offer PayPal. Like if there's things like that that are happening, you will lose a client. Almost 100% of the time, you're going to lose a client because people are nervous about giving their credit card number to businesses that don't look like they stay on top of their business on their website. Does that make sense? I know it's painful to hear. Some of you are like, man, I know that I've been needing to update this for a hot minute. You have. So let me help you. Okay. Get a pen, get a paper. I'm going to talk to you about, you know, things that you need to do for sure. Okay. So, um, and you know, let me, okay. Well, a couple other things here. Okay. If your website is still like got all this white space on the side and it's still like, just, you know, you're, if you're watching me on YouTube right now, you're seeing all my hand motions. If it's still like this strip down the middle of your page and it's not going from corner to corner, like you've got to get it updated. You just have to, if you um, are asking your friends and family to give you their input about your website, um, don't believe them. <laughs> don't believe them. They're not in your world. They are not in the online space and they probably don't want to hurt your feelings. Very few of them are going to give you really concrete um, criticism, tough love, and honesty back. So I'm going to give it to you right now. Okay. So five things I need you to make sure that um, you've got on your website. So number one, when people land on your website, please don't let it be all about you. Don't let it be all about you. 
unless you are Jenna Kutcher, unless you are Amy Porterfield, unless you are Tony Robbins, unless you, you know, are, are, unless you are a huge brand, it can't be all about you. Um, because it needs to be about your client, unless you are an influencer. Um, and then I think it's okay for you to introduce yourself on the homepage, but otherwise keep all of the stuff about you on your about page. I don't need to know anything about you in order to determine whether or not I want to buy that painted piece of furniture. I don't need to know anything about you to determine whether or not I want to buy those kids hair bows. Just take me to the hair bows. Don't tell me about how you fell in love with hair bows, you know, back five years ago when you had your first daughter, like that story is precious, but the really hard, honest truth. And I love you so much. So please love me right back as nobody cares. They don't care. I love you so much that I have to tell you the truth. People do not care about your story. If they get into your world, I think that they can be curious about your story. But for the most part, if you're trying to lead with your story, hoping it'll make sales, you're doing it backwards. Okay. Now you might say, well, Jennifer, if I go to jenniferallwood.com, it says, hi, I'm Jennifer. And I teach business owners how to make money online while keeping faith and family a top priority. Yes. There's a picture of me because I am the business coach. And um, I do think that with, you know, half a million followers that that allows you to have a little more flexibility on what is on your homepage. But I do try to make it relatable with the tagline. I teach business owners, just like you how to make money online, but also keeping faith and family a priority. You want people when they hit your website, um, to understand what's in it for them. So when people land on your website, I need it to be less about you and what you can do for them or what it is that you sell. There doesn't need to be a lot of nonsense here. Keep it straightforward. You sell hair bows, I sell hair bows. You sell cakes, I sell cakes. You sell business coaching, I sell business coaching. You sell houses, I sell houses. Like it doesn't need to be fluffy. It needs to be direct because people, when they land on your website, they need to know, am I in the right place? Am I gonna, is there gonna be anything that I can get out of this? So that needs to happen, first of all, when they're on your site. It needs to be less about you and more about them. So I want you to have an about section where people, you know, can read about you and all of the things, but please don't let it be completely focused all about you because if, if it is, um, you're going to be losing clients. So that's number one. Number two, there has to be a way that you can take people's money on your website. Now, some of you are going, uh, hello, Captain Obvious. You'd actually be surprised. We reviewed some websites today where there was literally no way for me to pay someone. Now, these aren't usually product people. These are people that are selling services. They're selling um, coaching services. They're selling uh, consulting services. They're selling um, branding services. We'll make you a logo services. But they're, they're, we went to some websites today. There was literally zero places for me to click buy now. I would click on, you know, learn more, but the truth is when I'm in the mood to buy, I don't really want to learn more. I literally want to buy. And so make sure your buttons say what it, what it is. Like it should, there should be some buy nows on your website that take you to the checkout page that don't take you to an emailing the person that owns the business. That's a lot of hoopla. That's a lot of rings to jump through. That's a lot of fluff. You're losing people doing that. We were on somebody's website today where we clicked the buy now. And it took us to like, you know how your computer will open up like the, a different mail service. And then it's like wanting to send an email. And I'm like, what is happening? I just want to buy. Now, another website that I reviewed today did not have PayPal as an option for checkout. Um, and that is problematic uh, because we have, there is almost 50% of our clients are using PayPal to check out. And when, what happens is, okay, let me tell you, we're going to go back to sales 101. Okay. Sales 101 is that your ideal client is laying on the sofa at night and um, her husband is watching uh, the latest episode of Cobra Kai and, um, and she's on the sofa, the kids have just went to bed and she's laying there and she's scrolling through her phone, listening to Cobra Kai, which never dies with one ear. Um, also listening for the baby, you know, to start crying, but scrolling through uh, Facebook, Instagram, something. She sees something that catches her eye that you've done, said, offered, or what have you. So she goes to your website. She gets to where she's all excited about your service, your product, your whatever. She wants to click and, and buy something and she gets to the checkout page. And the only option for her is to put in her credit card. And this is problematic. 
Um, it's problematic because she doesn't want to get up off the sofa and walk upstairs and grab her purse and get her new debit card, which the bank just gave her because her last one, you know, got involved in a situation where it may have been compromised. So she doesn't have the new number memorized, but she's laying there on the sofa right now, trying to tell herself, do I want that shirt enough to get up off the sofa and go upstairs? You know what? I probably shouldn't be spending the money anyway. We decided that after January 1st, we were going to try to cut back on, you know, spending that wasn't necessary. You know what? I probably don't need to sign up for that group anyway. I'm already in enough groups. You know what? She's So as soon as she sees that for her to spend money with you, is it all an effort? She's going to back that bus up. You are losing a sale every single time. Now, what could you do instead of PayPal? You could also do like Apple Pay. You could do Google Pay. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I personally don't do any of the pays. I did a whole story on that this week. I don't do anything that has fingerprint recognition, facial recognition, or anything that ends in the word pay. I just don't. I just don't. It's, uh, and we don't need to get into that here because if you're really interested, you can send me a DM on Instagram, but I don't do any of the things that end with the word pay. So, um, I do PayPal, I do PayPal, but, um, and you know, Jason is a little bit different in that he has his debit card number memorized. And so, um, if, if it doesn't have PayPal, I'll look at him. I'll be like, honey, what's your credit card number? And you know, he has, he can tell me, but, um, in, in all fairness, I can tell him his social security number though. And he doesn't know mine. So there's that. <laughs> like we're even Steven, because I know the social security numbers. He knows the credit card numbers together. We are magic. Anywho, anybody else's marriage like that's so funny. I'm like, how do you memorize your credit card number? But you have to look at me and just to make sure we're getting all the kids like years, right. That they were born. Uh, we do have a lot of kids. Okay. It's gotta be an easy way for me to give you money, friend. I know that sounds so obvious, but make it easy on people. If there's any friction in the checkout process, you will lose clients. What do you mean by friction? If there's anything that makes it at all an effort, if it doesn't autofill, if it, um, it's just really, really slow and it's just a spinning wheel of death forever, if there's not some easy options like PayPal or if you want to do Google Pay or Apple Pay or whatever, um, if, uh, if the checkout page takes you here and there and here and there and it, and it's like, yeah, you're going to lose people. So make it easy for them to give you money. Um, number three thing that your website needs to have a way of them connecting with you on social media. We need to have the icon that goes to Instagram, the one that goes to Facebook, the one that goes to Pinterest, the one that goes to LinkedIn, the one that goes to your podcast. There needs to be way other ways of them connecting with you. I don't want it though. Like in the most obvious spot, don't put it above the fold. Okay. Here's what above the fold means. Um, when people land on your website on desktop, Above the fold means what they see before they have to start scrolling down. So if I look at jenniferallwood.com right now, you can download the first chapter of my book. That's a little strip right at the top. Um, we're using pink um, very sparingly because pink and red freak people out on websites. So you got to use it sparingly. You don't want to lead with really in your face colors because it makes people back away. It just does. It's psychological. So, um, so we've got a little strip of pink. Do you want to download my first book? We've got the header of my website, my podcast, how to work with me, media releases. You go all the way down, all the way down. Then you can find where my Instagram and my Facebook, my Pinterest and my Twitter are. So, but make sure people have access to your social channels so that it's easy for them to bebop around um, and, and, and go to one of those off of your website. So there's that. Okay. Um, let's see. Point number four, uh, make sure I've got some rules. I feel very strongly about pop-ups. Okay. So here's the deal. I love a good pop-up. I love a funny pop-up. I love a snarky pop-up. I love a pop-up that gives me something amazing. If you're listening to this, you're like, what's a pop-up? It's that thing that when you land on somebody's website, it pops up. It's like a box. And it's like, do you want to get the latest news? Do you want to get 15% off? Do you want to get this free color chart? It's the thing that pops up that's trying to get your email. But now I have some serious rules that I tell everybody. And I'm going to tell you guys, um, because if you'll remember this, it will help. A lot of the people that are coming into my coaching group, they're having a hard time building their email list and we'll go to their website and we'll be like, oh, hallelujah. You got a website. Oh, it doesn't look that bad. Like, let's do this. Let's change this. Let's change this. And then I'm like, do you have a pop-up? Some of them don't. You know, there have been some different, you know, rules and things that have come out in recent years that some people have gotten away from pop-ups. Not me. I still like a pop-up man, but here's what happens. Sometimes 
will have the opposite of that. It's that they have a pop-up, but I land on their website and that pop-up hits me in the face in 2.2 seconds. And a hundred percent of the time I click the X to get it off, get off my screen, get off my screen, get it off my screen. I'm like, I want to go away. And then sometimes it pops up a second time. And I'm like, now you're like, that's crazy predatory behavior. And you're like, it won't leave me alone. Like make your pop-up stop. Here's the thing. Pop-ups can be very effective, but if people are landing on your website the very first time, they don't even know who Jennifer Allwood is. If I have a pop-up hitting them in the face right off the bat, 100% of the time they're clicking off. Why? Because they haven't even figured out what my site is about or what I do or who I am or what I stand for. So you've got to give them some seconds, at least 30 to 45 seconds to look through your site and kind of be, okay, so I see she has a podcast. It talks about faith and business. Okay. I see that, um, she does some coaching. I can even do some one-on-one coaching. Okay. I see that she used to be known, you know, for her home blogging stuff. Okay. I got that. And now the pop-up comes up. Okay. So there has to be that interim section, that courting session, because when it pops up too soon, think of it this way. When somebody lands on your website, that's like their first date. It's their first date with you, right? Somebody told them about your site. So it's like somebody was playing matchmaker. Hey, funny story. One time Ava, when she was little, she's just like, mom, you should join christianmingle.com because she knows no more Christians. And I'm like, Ava, I'm married to your dad. <laughs> like, I don't need no Christian mingle, baby. But anyhow, it's a matchmaking site. Okay, I digress. Let me get back here. Squirrel syndrome. All right, so um, when somebody is uh, coming to your site for the first time, you know, maybe somebody shared some, one of your posts or something. So they're landing there for the first time. And this is your, what you do is all new to them. It's all new to them. And they're like, well, let me check her out. If that pop-up comes up too soon, it's like, we've gone from first base to they're asking you out on the second date way too soon. And hundred percent of the time, when you're out on a blind date, you're saying no, they're already asking you to go out next week. And they haven't even picked you up for the first week yet. It's just, it's too much too soon. It's in your face. So back off with your pop-ups. I love you, but the pop-ups are coming up too quick. They're taking up the whole screen. Sometimes they're popping up twice and let's go, let's go one step further. I should almost just have had a whole episode on pop-ups. Can we make our pop-ups pretty? Can we make them fun? Can we make them not boring? Can I also tell you, nobody wants to be the first to know. Nobody wants to stay up to date on whatever it is that you're doing. Nobody wants to be in the know. None of those things. If you are having a hard time getting people on your email list, which by the way, in today's craziness on social, better be what you're spending the most amount of time on. If you are having trouble, it's because you're just asking them for an email and people don't want to give their emails. They're like, no, if you're watching me on YouTube right now, you're seeing me holding it to my chest. Like this is my email and I don't want any more crazy ones. No, I don't need your crap. So how do you get people's emails? You offer them something juicy. You offer them a 10% discount. You offer them a free report on something. One of my best, um, my best opt-ins are my devotional for business owners at jenniferalwood.com slash devotional. That has been one of our most popular opt-ins. Back when I owned my painting company, it was my top 50 paint colors that people could print out and take to the paint store with them. Um, but you've got to have juicy opt-ins that pop up on your screen. Right now we've got the want done want the first chapter of my book downloaded for free. And that's been a really great opt-in, but people aren't just going to hand you their email. They don't want more crap in their inbox. They're already overwhelmed. They're trying to, you know, uh, homeschool their kids plus navigate the world. That's crazy right now. Plus, you know, keep up on, um, everything, keep their family healthy. And you're wanting to send more email to them and they're not going to give it to you. So it's gotta be a discount. It's gotta be a, get my free thing. Um, it's gotta be something juicy to make them want to do the exchange. The great exchange is here's my email in exchange for that cool thing. You're going to give me, it could be, we have like free wallpapers encouraging wallpapers that we give away sometimes. And, um, but it's gotta be something along those lines. It really has to. So, um, so get your pop-up, get your pop-up on point. Okay. All right, fine. Last one. Um, every, something, every good website has to have is Google analytics installed. Now you may say, okay, what's that for? So Google analytics is how you track all of your traffic to your website. Uh, we noticed that a lot of the clients coming into my coaching program, they have no idea how much traffic they're getting. They don't know if they're getting a hundred hits a month or a hundred thousand. And that's an issue. You've got to know if you're getting traffic and where is traffic coming from and where are they mostly going to those things are so helpful. 
in terms of like determining what your people actually want, what they're actually looking at, how fast they're like leaving, but you've got to have Google Analytics installed on your website. Now, if you don't know how to do that, you can just literally go to the Googles and type in, how do I install Google Analytics on my website? You will easily find the answer to that. But Google Analytics is an eye opener because it tells you where most people are coming from. For years and years, I thought that the majority of my people were coming to my site, probably from my Facebook page. I thought, you know, I've got at this point, 360,000 Facebook followers. That's gotta be where the majority of my traffic is coming from. Oh no, the majority of my traffic still today, even though I'm no longer in the DIY, home decorating, painting industry, still the majority of my traffic is coming from Pinterest. Still, even on my business website. Still, I mean, yes, I've got an additional one called Jennifer Allwood Home, but even on just jenniferallwood.com, the majority of my traffic comes from Pinterest. And when we figured that out, then we're like, well, geez, then we can't just ignore Pinterest. We got to be putting my podcast there. We got to be in putting some, you know, business blog posts there. Like when you find out where people are finding you from, it's an eye opener. So make sure you install Google Analytics to see where your traffic is actually coming from. Now, if you're like, girl, I don't have any traffic. <laughs> I have nothing. I have zero traffic. Um, you need to be in my inner circle, which is my monthly coaching group where I show you how to get more followers, how to get more people on Pinterest, how to get more people on Facebook, how to get more people on Instagram. That's where your traffic's going to come from. If you are thinking that in the year 2021, somebody is just going to stumble across your website where you're selling paint, whether you're selling clothes, whether you're selling homes, whether you're selling SEO services, if you think people will just discover you, not going to happen. You've got to have people that you can push towards your website. And so if you don't have people get on my wait list right now for the next time we open my monthly coaching group, it'll be at the end of January, I believe beginning of February it's creators inner circle.com. No, it's not for creatives. It's for anybody that's creating a business in the online space. You're a creator creators, inner circle.com. It's literally my $47 a month program. Cause we're planning on helping twice as many entrepreneurs in 2021. And um, if you could help us by sharing this content, it would be so appreciated. Okay, friends, we're rooting for you. We're rooting for your website. Good website equals good sales. I know that that seems obvious, but there's if you can just go and look at your website with fresh eyes, have it, has it been updated lately? Did it hit those five points? Is there you know space on the side of it? Does it need a whole new look to it? Does it need you know just a, a fresh? I mean, who doesn't need a f- something freshened up every couple of years, right? And so go take care of that. It will affect the bottom line of your business. All right, best you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.